Cavalry Heath Golf Club was laid out in 1913 by Harry S. Colt, built on 135 acres of beautiful Surrey Heathland flanked by towering pines. Not a particularly long course, just over 6,400 yards, par 71. The club's royal ties date back to the 1920s where matches between the Admirals and the Generals were arranged to mark the club's involvement with the Royal Military Academy and Staff College in Sandhurst. Camberley Heath was where I started off and learnt all my golf and it has been an absolute godsend to me, I have to say. I remember in the old clubhouse I used to stand around the putting green with the club professional Graham Everett and I promise you we used to start at nine in the morning and putt right the way around till five in the afternoon, non-stop, playing for five P accumulators. I eventually became a decent putter on the European Tour and I have to say it is down to that putting green, to Graham Everett and to Camberley Heath as to why I putted so well. In its first hundred years, the course has gone through many necessary changes to improve drainage and playing conditions, but the course manager, in collaboration with course designer Frank Pont, have ensured that Harry Colt's original vision has been maintained. An ongoing programme of forestry and heathland regeneration is in place around the course. State-of-the-art irrigation systems combined with excellent natural drainage keeps the sandy, free-draining fairways in pristine condition all year round. The fourth hole is a par four. It's changed over the years. It's now down to 306 yards. It's very well bunkered off the tee. Course management certainly comes into the equation with your tee shot here. If you get a three wood, maybe a hybrid club off the tee, you can uh, hit no more than a, an a wedge or a nine iron in for your second shot. But for the longer hitter, possibly the pro, you could have a go at this green with your driver. Many of the holes around Camberley Heath have uh, been great memories for me, but uh, I think one of my favourite holes would be the 13th. Reason being, you've got to be so precise off the tee. Having been a pro myself, I always used to get it up onto the left-hand side. Once you get it up on that left-hand side, you're quite an inviting second shot. Three would high, left to right. I used to try and hit it to, to knock it on in two. The fifth hole now has become a totally different story. It used to be a par five. It's now a par four from a raised tee down to a fairway that slopes very slightly away from you from left to right on the landing area. It gently dog legs from right to left. It's vitally important to hit the fairway. If you knock it in the rough, I'm afraid for you Ams, you'll be laying up over the cross bunkers and just pitching in with a sand iron for your third. Vitally important to hit the fairway at the 16th. Again, a hybrid club, maybe a three or four iron for the longer hitter. It's a newly designed green. It slopes from back to front, little bunker on the right hand side. But the green, if you happen to hit the ball to the back of the green, it's a very quick putt down the slope. The 18th hole at Camberley Heath is a par four, 332 yards. You drive over a huge mound of heather on the right-hand side from a raised tee, can't see the ball land. And for the shorter hitters, it's been well known for many, many years as a place down the left-hand side. It's called Old Man's Corner, somewhere I have to start hitting it nowadays, I'm afraid. Second shot is uphill, you can only see a quarter to half of the flag, depending where they put the, the flag on the green. It's only a wedge, maybe a nine iron, but it's certainly a very good birdie opportunity. The great thing about Camberley Heath is the social side is fantastic. There's been many changes over the years, but it's always, always kept its theme. Myself and Wayne Riley put up a trophy in the memory of Don Andrews, and that's played for at every Christmas. But on the Fridays, you roll up, put a fiver in, out you go. It's called the Greedy. Go out and play, winner takes it all. The new clubhouse was completed in 1991 and has since become a popular venue for meetings, weddings and other celebrations. You'll get a very warm welcome from the professional shop and also from the club bar. The Wessex Suites, the club's function rooms, were refurbished in 2015 and reopened by their namesake. The Windsor Room offers a large space with grand vaulted ceilings and a view over our 18th hole and to the west. The Connaught Suite offers a smaller interior space but is serviced by a roof terrace that offers 270 degree views of the golf course and its grounds. So you've had a good look uh, around the golf course, around the clubhouse. Come along for a game. I'm Richard Boxall and I look forward to seeing you soon.